I think for me, um, an ultra marathon is the perfect metaphor for how we go about setting. And, and I like to I like to call them insane goals because let's be honest, the the average person does not set out to run two hundred and seventy kilometers through the Queenstown Mountains. Uh, this was a pretty big goal, even for me. But to give you a little bit of history and and. I guess, actually, I'll, I'll just walk through the webinar. So you all know me, Kyron Goss. Um, and, and my whole thing is being an adventurer. For me, ultra marathons are about the adventure of it, not the actual running side. Although the running side does actually give my brain a chance to shut up, um, which I love. <laughs> Those of you who know me, there's always something going on and, and it's just really nice for it to be quiet once in a while. And of course, social entrepreneur. So today I want to walk through with you um, a little bit about who set your expectations or who set the way you think, because the way you think can actually be taught, right? It's, it's a learned skill. So we can change that. We're going to talk a little bit about setting your own insane goals and what they might be. Um, we're going to talk about learning cycles, knowing your own strengths, following a plan, and also how to then accelerate your results. Um, at the end, um, we are bringing on, we are taking on the next cohort for the Freedom Accelerator. If anyone is interested in learning more about that, then I'll give you a, a link at the end and we can jump on a one-on-one -on -one call and, and talk about what your insane goals are or even what your normal goals are and, um, and how we might be able to fast track them and, and create a life that you don't want to escape from pretty much. So the reason why I'm running this webinar is because I just have finished, uh, literally finished on Saturday, a 270 kilometer six day uh, run through the Otago Mountains, finishing at, at Queenstown there, starting at Lake Hawia. And um, we did over 10,000 meters in, uh, in elevation. To put that in context, Mount Everest is around about 8,000 something. So I have run higher or more elevation than Mount Everest plus some over the space of a week. And what I found most interesting about all this was I got no blisters, I got no real injuries, and I only got faster and faster throughout the run. I, it doesn't make sense to me either, Carol. Um, I was just as perplexed as everybody else. Um, and I, I just seemed to get better and better and better. I was expecting to be broken, but that didn't happen at all. So what I'd like to share today is, is some of those insights um, and how you can translate what I've just done and why I've done it. And I'll share the real insane goal in a minute um, into your own journey. Because for a lot of us, I guess we come from a background where We've been taught to think a, a certain way. And, and once we start setting our goals, we're surrounded by naysayers. We're surrounded by people who, you know, live average lives, who sort of dictate our lives. So anything we try to do out of the ordinary, be it creating financial freedom, being, you know, retiring early or be it running ridiculously ridiculous distances, um, most of the time we live within a box created by somebody else. I like to call it the blinkers. You know how a horse has blinkers so it can only see one direction? And this is how most people live. If you think about it, you probably go to the mortgage broker and say, this is what I have, what can I do? And then the mortgage broker tells you what you can do. Most people live their lives letting somebody else tell them what they can do which means they are constantly operating in a scarcity mindset, being severely limited by what their current resources are. Whereas the reality is, if you were to turn that around and say, this is what I want to do, what would I need in order to do that? Then you would get very different answers and your life and your wealth and, and whatever it is, your, your goals would be a completely different situation, right? And so that's what I say. That's why I want to know, who trained you to think the way that you do? Wealth Mentor has trained you to think a certain way, but outside of that, who trained you? 
Because I know if I look at who trained me, it was very much my parents. It was the school I went to. It was my friends, my par parents' friends. And most of them, actually all of them, are not somewhere I want to be. So think about this, right? This is a, this is a learned behavior. The way we think is learned. It is taught to us at school. It is drummed into us at school and is drummed into us from our parents. But the way that the greats, the way that the big entrepreneurs and the, the big wealth creators around the world think is completely different. They know what they want and they go after it come hell or high water, right? Most of us say, this is what I have. What can I do with it? They say, this is what I want. How the bloody hell can I get it? This is a concept that I call the wealth ladder. Now, most of us are aware of the property ladder or we talk about the property ladder, getting our first footstep on the property ladder, right? But there are many rungs to the wealth ladder. And the, the crazy thing is with each rung, you actually completely need to change your thinking. So let's take a look at the very first rung. Now, all of you are already here. This is where you start by mastering your money. This is even just that whole money side of things. It's getting your credit card under control. It's knowing how much you're spending, having good money habits, being cash flow positive in your job and in your money habits so that you're actually saving money at the end of the day. Now, once you've been saving money, once, you're in, once you've got good money habits, you can actually step up to the next rung, which is where instead of focusing on saving, you focus on investing. So this is where you're now looking at how your money can earn more money. So we might be talking about buying a home. We might be talking about different asset classes, or you might be investing for your retirement, putting money in KiwiSaver or in your Aussie super fund. You might be looking at what insurances you can take out for to, to protect yourself, right? So this is all investment mindset. I've also got fire there because there is one strategy to create freedom. It's a horrible, horrible strategy. It involves living like a pauper for about six years, eating two minute noodles and, and just having no life in order to save as much money as possible and put it into the stock market. But I think there's a better way because there's no transformation. There's no wealth mindset through those strategies, right? And this is where Wealth Mentor has traditionally stepped in. This is giving you that wealth mindset. How do you actually create? How do you earn money? How do you invest your money? But how do you now create money? How do you create wealth? And this is where we start talking about leverage. We start looking inwards. We start looking at self-mastery and discovery. We look at return on investments and we start looking towards that lifestyle and work balance. But there's actually one more level above that. And this is where the great entrepreneurs, those who say, this is what I want. How do I get it? And this is step four. This is legacy mindset. This is where you're building a brand, a reputation. You're looking at diversification. This is where you're not only making money, but you're essentially creating your own currency. You're building trust. Imagine this, right? I love using the, the concept of Richard Branson. If Richard Branson, if you and Richard Branson had a freaky Friday moment and he woke up in your body, He's looking around after Carol. Obviously, he's going to do a bit of the old padonk padonk. But, oh, yeah. But if he woke up in your body, how long do you think it would take for him or you to become a billionaire? Would it be weeks? Would it be months? Would it be years? Feel free to put him a chat. There's no right or wrong answer here. Yeah, I can see people starting to think, how long do you think it would be until Richard Branson or you became a billionaire? Carol saying one year. I have no idea. But the reality is, I think all of us could agree that he would become a billionaire again. 
which goes to show that it's actually nothing to do with who you are. It's nothing to do with what resources you are. It's all the way, it's all about how you think, about how you think about money, how you think about wealth and how you think about your goals. And that's why I think this fourth step is absolutely key. So my question to you, and I want you to write this in the chat, is what would you do if money and time was no object? If money and time was no object, what would you do with your life? I know for many people it's travel, others it's help other people and inspire, Tom saying travel. And where would you travel to, Tom? And what would you do on your travels? My question is always then as a follow-up, what if we could do this tomorrow? What if we could fast track how you're doing it all? You've all got the wealth mentor education, but what if we could fast track that? invest more into family, time and energy, and then into myself. So what if you could be doing that tomorrow, right? What if we could be doing that in the quickest way possible? How would we do this? This is Kiyosaki 101, and I don't know why this background's come up like that. I need to look at what didn't look like that on my slides. I can guarantee you that. But Kiyosaki 101, right, is don't ask if you can afford it. Ask how you can afford it. So this is where we start reframing, we rethinking. So it's not about if you can afford to travel, Tom. We know you'd be able to, but it's how you can have all of that. And I'm an eat my cake and have it too type of person, right? You've heard of the marshmallow test? Where, um, where they say delayed gratification and all of that. I say, take the marshmallow now and then bloody negotiate later to get the second one. For those of you who know what the hell I'm talking about, right? So I don't think we should have to wait. I can tell you, I don't want to wait until I'm Carol's age in order to be able to go traveling. And, and I don't think I'd even be able to jump off any bridges once I was Carol's age, which means, <laughs> it's all right, Carol knows I love her. Um, which means I want to have everything right now. I'm a millennial. I'm the me generation. I want it. I want it. I want it. And I want it right now. Right. Which means we just have to rethink not when can I do it? Not can I do it? But how can I afford to do it? And how can I afford to do it right now? Yeah, luckily, I'm a fair way away from you, Carol. <laughs> So I want to share with you my crazy, insane goal. That 270K run through the mountains in Queenstown, that was a training run. This is my real goal. This was something that did the rounds on social media a little while ago. I'd run my first ultra through Bali. And the question came up, right? The same question. One of my friends shared this and I was like, oh my God, that's absolutely crazy. How would anybody ever do that? And about five days later, I messaged him back and I said, I figured out how somebody would do that and I've locked it in for 2025. So from May, 2025, I'm actually, I mean, I'm setting this goal now. Obviously half of this is through Russia. Things, you know, not looking pretty in Russia, but this is a goal I've committed to. So it's 23,000 kilometers. It goes through 16 different countries, including Syria. Um, I wouldn't actually go through South Sudan. I've, I've moved the map a little bit. But this is the longest you can go, the longest point-to-point -point track on Google Maps on Earth. And as far as we're aware, no one has ever done it. But I've made it that extra little bit special to, to have it more aligned with me, to have more of a purpose when I do it, not just to do it, but to plant one tree with every step, which means now I need to raise around about $28 million in order to plant those trees. Carol trying to do the numbers in her head, yes. At one US dollar per tree, um, it's around about 28, 28 million steps. 
So now that we know what the goal is, we can start to look at how we break it down, in which case my 270K goal was just a training plan, right? It was the first time I said, well, is it possible in order to do this 365 days, it's about 60 kilometers. So I went out there and I said, is it possible to even run 60 kilometers day after day after day? And that's really where this um, this run came in, right? This, this Queenstown run. It was my attempt to run multiple days in a row. And not only did I find it possible, I found I excelled at it as well. So it wouldn't be 12 hours, Tim. I'm a bit faster than that. So this is where most of us see something like that and it scares the shit out of them. Now, I don't expect you to do anything crazy like this but you would have your own version. You would have your own crazy goal, your own insane goal that you think is impossible or you you know, you know, think is impossible that you'd love to do, but you're too scared to share it because everyone's going to possibly put you in the loony bin. Again, lucky I'm too far away from Carol. She can't commit me. Um, but we can start by asking better questions. So the first question is, has it ever been done before? Now, this route has not been done before as far as we can make out. But actually, there was a Frenchman who ran further. This is 23,000 kilometers. He ran 27,000 kilometers, 65, 70 kilometers a day circumnavigating Europe. So we know that it's possible, right? And then I can start to look, I can start to see who are the elites who do this. So I found Lisa Tamati, um, Samantha Gash, crazy insane ultra runners who are now part of my network and who are on my side helping me to get in position in order to do this. Can someone raise that much money in one year? Another question, right? Because for me, it's not just for running, it's, it's the, the fundraising and all of that. So is it even possible for someone to raise $28 million in one year? So the question then is, has anyone ever done that? And I'll share with you as some of the research as I've gone on to the next. And if I was to do this, who would I need on my team and who could I partner with? Because let's be honest, I could not do this by myself. So when you're setting your goals, I want you to be asking better questions. Maybe some of these questions are, rel are related but maybe you need to be asking your own questions. And one of my favorite ways to do this, I remember saying to my brother um, when he was trying to figure out what he wanted to do, I said to him, I was like, look, Logan, you're not going to do this, but if somebody was going to do it, it's not you, but if it was somebody, what would that look like and, and how would they do it? And he was like, oh, well, they'd do it this way. And I was like, okay, well, now the question is, are you going to be that somebody or not? The minute you take yourself out of the equation, the minute you say, how could insert your legendary hero here, how would they do it? Then the question is, how do you become that person? Because it's all possible for us if you want it bad enough. And this is where the question then comes in. Are your goals big enough that you cannot achieve them on your own. If your goal is still very much something you have to do by yourself, you're probably not thinking big enough. As you climb up the wealth ladder, you're going to start having more and more of an impact on others, which means you can't do it by yourself. So here's the team that I started to put together when I thought about how I could not only run it, but also how I could do the fundraising. And so this here is Paul Dunn. Um, he, him and his uh, wife, Masami, founded B1G1. And I was like, perfect, buy one, give one. So this is the, the platform that we can use in order to, to raise the money and to donate to the different charities uh, in order to give the trees. 
This is Tom Hickman from Bali Hope. This is the first ultra I ever did, and he came on board with me. He after the Christchurch terror attacks, he he told me he wanted to do something for the community, and we already we set up the Unity Ultra. So we already have history together. And I was like, you know what? We could actually set up the Insanity Ultra. He could help with logistics. Now his partner, wife, partner, is really good friends with Kate. Oh, God. Kate from Titanic. Can't remember her name. And so his, his partner is good friends with Kate. And Kate is actually married to one of Richard Branson's. Um, here we go, Carol's Winslet. That's it. I'm pretty sure it's Kate Winslet. Um, so, yeah, she's married to one of Richard Branson's nephews and they do the Strive Challenge. And I was like, so I've already got this perfect connection in to Richard Branson. Richard Branson can easily raise $28 million, right? I started looking at who else was doing something similar. And if for those of you who, um, who know this guy, Mr. Beast, Mark Rober, Team Trees, right? So they ran a Team Trees um, fundraising project where they raised 20 million US to plant 20 million trees ac across the US. So we know that that's possible. So then it's just one, how do I, how do I run that distance? So this is Lisa Tamati and Neil Wagstaff, who, um, who I've now brought on as my coaches. Neil is a exercise scientist. He picked up Lisa when she was pretty much broken and falling apart and helped her revive her career. And she now coaches on the actual mindset side whilst he coaches on the, um, the physical doing side. So that's how... I was actually able to run 270Ks without getting broken, without getting blisters and just get stronger and stronger and stronger. And then of course, I'm going to need the financial side. It's going to cost me around about $4 million, I expect, in order to buy the expedition vehicle and do all of that, which is where I'm now working as a partner with Wealth Mentor, right? And so it, it takes all of these people and no doubt there'll be more people who come on board in order to realize this vision. So the question is for you, who do you need on your team in order to realize your big, crazy vision? So then the real question, you've heard us say this a million times, and to be honest, this is actually why I got into ultra running. You've heard the be, do, have so many times, right? Now, I put that to the test with my very first ultra. I was not a runner at all. In fact, I'd never run more than a half marathon. And when I signed up for my first ultra, I'd never run more than 5Ks in about six years. However, I knew that because of Be Do Have, when I signed up to run 84 kilometers across Bali, I knew it was possible because other people have done it. And all I had to do was it took me six months in order to become, in order to become an ultra marathon runner. And of course, I was able to do that. And, and once I've done it, I, I then learned the real skills of how to do it, not just how to crawl my way across an 84K uh, run, but how to now do it and, and thrive, right? Um, so who do you actually have to become? This is absolutely key. So I want to share with you some of the lessons from my run. Today, we're going to talk about understanding learning cycles, knowing your strengths and weaknesses, having the right teams, and following and sticking to a plan, because I believe they are key to why not only was I able to complete this run, but actually thrive at it. And learning cycles is something that we don't talk about enough. What we're all doing is entrepreneurial. We're testing the boundaries. We're, we're in new spaces, right? Even though we've all got the training and we learn from the best, you still need to implement it into your life. So having the time to test it, to fuck it up, to test again, and to potentially screw it up again, and just keep going and learning and implementing your learning is key. And what was one of the great things about having a six-day multi-stage race was the lessons I got on stage one, I was able to implement on stage two, on stage three, and it, I, the speed at which I was learning. 
So the question for you guys, as you're working through your goals, is how fast are your learning cycles? Now, when I was on this, uh, when I was on this multi-stage race, they were daily learning cycles. Running the Freedom Accelerator, it's quarterly learning cycles. So I'm, I'm learning four times a year, able to tweak, implement, change, and put it forward four times a year. But if you were doing one house a year, you've now got annual learning cycles, right? So how can you speed up your learning cycles, even if it's giving up your time for free, to go and support someone on their project just so you can learn and fast track it, right? And I think the other key thing is surrounding yourself with people who are learning as well. We are in the age where there's no such thing as a guru. Things are moving too quickly, which means everyone needs to be a leading learner. You need to be learning, implementing, forgetting, and learning new. And I've got a really cool quote coming up towards the end around that. The second thing is you really need to know your strengths. Now, this picture does it no justice, but we were right up in the mountains at some point. We, we did, it took eight hours to go 25 kilometers, right? Which is, as a runner, that's extremely slow. That's four, eight, so 32, three, eight, so 24. It's about three kilometers an hour. <laughs> And that's because we were literally going from the valleys um, straight up into the clouds and then straight back down into the valleys and then straight back up into the clouds. But one of the things I learned along the way, so again, talking about learning cycles and then implementing it immediately, the mountain stage was day three, where I learned that gravity affects me differently from it affects other people. It really tugs on me. So I'm super slow going up hills whilst other people power up, but fuck am I fast coming down. And so whilst other people were dilly-dallying, you know, like being really careful with their steps, I was literally sprinting down the hills. And so as soon as I learned that, I played to my strengths. I didn't try exhaust myself going up the hills. I just went up at my pace and I overtook everyone coming down the hill. Again, I wasn't racing, but I do just want to point out, I did come 15th overall. I did come third on the final day, which, you know, again, not racing, but just facts of facts. <laughs> um, and don't try to be anything you're not. I think that's the key thing. One of the things we do in the Freedom Accelerator is everybody takes um, a, a special wealth profile test. So you know exactly what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are, and therefore you only do what you are good at and you bring in somebody else to do the stuff you don't like and the stuff you're not good at, right? So knowing exactly who you are, what your strengths are, is one of the absolute key um, pieces to actually going after your goals, especially when you're in a team. Let other people do what they're good at. And that really brings us into the next step, having the right team on board. This is, um, this is a group of, of this is me and, and my ladies. Um, they're both in their 50s or so. And my strategy going into it was I knew that I can be quite egotistical. I knew that I'm quite competitive. So if I had have started one right from day one, running as fast as I could have, then I would have been broken. I would have been sore. I would have had blisters and the rest of the week would have just been hell. So instead, what I did is I forced myself to run with these two ladies um, at a much slower pace than I'm used to, or at least than I could have done it in, in order to keep me accountable and in order to ensure that I didn't burn myself out too quickly. In context, um, one of our other friends, she did the exact opposite and she, she's still messaging me going, I think you had the right strategy. She just burned herself out. She had blisters from day one and she says, although she beat me, I think she came 13th overall. She's like, you seem to have way more fun than me, Karen. <laughs> So one of the key things I believe is a coach who believes in you. When I shared my big worldwide run with Neil, with my, my running coach, 
he was excited, right? Some people, I've shared it with others who are like, oh yeah, whatever. Um, but he was excited. He knew exactly how to break it down. He knew exactly what I was going to need in order to do that. He knew it was possible. And he's now working through with me of all the things I never, ever would have thought of, even to the point where I have not drunk a normal glass of water in about a month now. Everything has electrolytes in it in order to ensure that my legs and my muscles and everything are, um, are on point. All these little things that you'd never think of. Um, being part of the movement as well. Part of the reason why I think this went so well is I wasn't by myself. I was one of many, right? If I did this by myself, I would have been sore. I would have been miserable. And this is why jumping on the bandwagon or being part of the movement is going to help you to get there quicker. Being part of the community as well is just going to help you to get there quicker and to make it easier. And then don't try to do it all yourself. Partner with other people. If your goal is bigger than yourself, then there are other people who are going to want to jump on board like Tom, like B1G1, and hopefully like Richard Branson in order to help us achieve this goal because it's a selfless goal, right? Whilst, whilst there is a bit of an egotistical side to it being the first person to run across the world, the reality is the whole point is, is to protect the environment and to raise money one tree for every step taken. Now, again, that is a big, crazy, insane goal. You don't have to go that big, but whatever it is you're working on, who can you partner with in order to reach your goal? Even if it means just, you know, from the housing point of view, doing joint ventures with someone on the side whilst you've got your buy and hold portfolio going as well. And then ultimately, again, the stupid background, Natalia, can you remind me tomorrow to try fix this? Um, but this old saying, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. One of the things I kept running through in my head whilst I was running is plan the run and run the plan. And that's why I ultimately stuck to it. That's why it took me longer to do days one and two than it probably should have because we had a plan in place. The plan was to take it slow, to take the brakes off on, um, on the, the, the long day, the 69 kilometer day, it took 12 hours. And by that day I was sprinting. If you know anything about running on Strava, I've got the 10th fastest segment over Rose's Pass. Um, and, and that was simply because we had a plan in place. I was fifth across the line. Um, after running for 12 and a half hours. It was absolutely epic. And that was all because we had a plan in place. So make sure you actually have a solid plan to start with. Not a dream, not a goal, but an actual plan of how you're going to get there. And then how are you going to stay accountable? I stayed accountable a number of ways, right? The way I do this is I'm very public about what I'm doing. So I'd already put it all over social media. Everybody knew what I was going into. So if I failed, it would have been a very public and embarrassing failure. I already had this webinar scheduled and all of the emails going out before I'd finished, which meant that by the time I finished, you all knew what I was doing and what I was hosting which means I would have looked like an absolute dick if I had of, um, if I had of kind of showing up here today going, well, this is how you set crazy insane goals and achieve them. Although I didn't achieve it. Um, this is how you can do it. Right. So it's, it's, it's actually taking that accountability, finding someone outside of yourself because you will always forgive yourself. You are the only person who can forgive yourself, but finding someone else that you can stay accountable to is absolute key. And to begin with, you know, those first two days, I stayed accountable to Annalise and Kelly. You can see them in background. Um, I stayed accountable by running with them, making sure I stuck with them, as well as everything else I put to ensure that I actually finished the run. 
And then of course, never ever give up. This is why I love ultra marathons. And this is why I think they're the perfect met metaphor. An ultra marathon is a stupid, ridiculous distance. Don't get me wrong. I know that. I, I do understand it's a stupid, ridiculous distance, right? But the thing about it, and this is what I learned from Bali, is you can achieve anything you like. All you need to do is put one foot in front of the other, and after enough time, you are going to get there. It doesn't matter the distance. In one month's time, I'm going to go and attempt my first miler, 100 miles, 160 Ks. I'm actually hoping to do a lot more than that. I want to do the whole 270 I've just done in this nonstop in a, in a new race, right? And I know that it's just one foot. When things get tough, all I need to do is put one foot in front of the other. And when you're working towards your goals, things are going to get tough. But as long as you put one foot in front of the other, you just take that smallest step necessary, then you will ultimately get there. And that is the key. That is ultimately the plan. Break it down into the smallest possible step. So how can you set your own crazy, insane goals? Whatever crazy, whatever insane means to you, right? Whatever it is you're trying to achieve. So I'd love to invite you to set the biggest goal that you possibly can. What is the biggest goal that you possibly can, you can think of, that you'd like to achieve? What are those, what are those things, those goals that you keep secret? Because if you say it out loud, one, you might be forced to have to do it. But two, people might think you're crazy. Because we can then break it down into the smallest step possible. I haven't started by running 23,000 kilometers. I've started by running 270 kilometers. And even before that, I started with a five kilometer um, training run, right? Or I went 50 kilometers max in my training. So often we get too consumed. What it's the saying? Can't see the forest for the trees or can't see the trees for the forest. Don't think about the forest. Think about the individual tree, right? What is the smallest possible step that you can do today in order to reach your goal? Because then it's going to start to snowball, build it up, and it's going to gain momentum. You know, things that you think are hard right now are going to start to become easy. I never expected to be, <laughs> to be on the other side. I wouldn't say the run was easy, but it was easier than I expected. And that's because of all that momentum that I'd built up. Ultimately, you need to transform who you are. We've been through this, the be, do, have. And then finally, being part of a group that's going to keep you accountable. People who can think crazy, people who have their own crazy goals as well. And I think that is really where the Freedom Accelerator starts to come in. For those of you who are looking to really spread your wings to step up and to start going for something a bit bigger, I told you I was going to share with you an absolute epic quote. And this is it. The illiterate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read and write, but those who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. This is what the wealth ladder is all about. In order for you to take the next step up, you need to unlearn everything you know at a step below. Relearn what you need to do at that next step. And that's what excites me so much about what we're doing in the Freedom Accelerator, because we're essentially saying, what do you want? What is your five-year goal? And how do we achieve that in one year? And we've got people such as Fawzi, who's working on building a thousand houses to home, home people within the next five years. Um, we've got Therese, who's working on getting into space within the next five years. Some really epic goals, but it all comes from 
a different way of thinking. So for those of you who aren't aware of it, Freedom Accelerator is a 12 month accelerator and mastermind program for those who wanna accelerate their financial freedom and go after some bigger goals where we focus on the wealth ladder, but really focusing on this fourth step here around legacy, around, around business, around brand and reputation, and around just completely thinking differently, taking an entrepreneurial approach to everything you're doing to achieve the life that you want today, the life that you don't need to escape from, where you go out and you, you're essentially, your life, your business is having fun doing what you love most. And it's all a tax write-off. Everything that Kiyosaki talks about on the right-hand side of the quadrant, right? So the way we break it down is into three different steps. Dream, design, deliver. Dream is where we actually draw up a five-year vision. You can see my entire five-year vision right here, including the run, including the home, the Tesla, the puppy, and of course, in a happy relationship. So what would your five-year vision be? What is the life that you want to live? Where do you want to live? What do you want to be doing with your time? drawing up a future vision and what is this dream, this crazy dream that you're too scared to share with people? Because we have a community full of crazy people just like you who have actually spoken that dream out out loud and are now working towards it. We got people working on building $45 million um, company portfolios, another one going for the 100 million. Again, once you start asking those questions, the answer of how you get there will come up. I guarantee it. You've just never asked that question before. Once you know, once you've got that five-year vision, we work out who you need to become. How do you need to transform in order to achieve that dream? And that's where we bring in the be, the do, the have, we set them up into annual goals and then quarterly goals, and then we track them weekly in order to ensure that you're step-by-step step becoming and getting to that place you want to be, becoming the person you need to be in order to achieve that goal. In fact, here's, here's an example. This is, um, this is one of mine. This is my running one. This is an example of a flight deck. Everybody in the Freedom Accelerator has one. And as you can see, I've pretty much drawn up my plan on how I get to the point where I run across the world, starting with my training runs and all the runs that I've been booking in this year, all the runs that I'm going to do next year leading up into it, what are the runs that are going to give me the, the skills that I need in order to do it. Finally, 2024, whatever runs I'm going to have to do there in order to then enter into the Insanity Ultra. We then track the money side. We track our investments. We track um, influences. We track the fundraising. We're doing all of that so that we know we are on, par, on the right path week by week by week to ensure that we're actually getting there. And at any point, if we're off track, we know we're off track because the measures and metrics aren't showing up and we can jump in and fix it right away. None of this is left to chance. We redesign what our life looks like, what our portfolio looks like, what our money side looks like. And there's two ways we can do that. If you want immediate freedom, you can do it through an investment pipeline, which is where we start looking at more um, investment opportunities outside of just property from crypto to IPOs to Forex to trading to um, even banks. If, if you go outside of retail banks, you can still be getting 14, 16% just from storing your money in the bank. But what's even more interesting is when you start taking your profits and reinvesting them to compound them, then your return starts to grow exponentially. And we have people within the group getting 100% plus on their money every single year. With, with without the risk. Well, there's always risk, right? But it's not as risky as you would expect. Or we have other people who have gone, you know what? I don't actually want to escape from life. I love what I do and I just want to help more people um, through. I just want to monetize what I love doing, right? And so we've now got some people who are setting up businesses around what they love doing. 
where they're going to hit their financial freedom number um, within a year instead of five, but they have dictated how they work and how they show up. So two different ways that you can design your life in order to achieve your dream. And then it's all about how you, we deliver it. So the way it's delivered is we have a quarter, well, we have the onboarding dream session. We then ran a quarterly planning workshop in order to help you draw up the plans, the flight deck, everything, um, your quarterly goals in order to keep you on track. We run a fortnightly mastermind every two weeks um, in the evening, which means you're held accountable, not only by me, but by everybody else on the call. Everybody knows what your goals are and they will challenge you. Everybody is in this together. They've made a commitment to challenge you and to ensure that you are on track to actually achieving what you've said you're going to achieve and helping you stay accountable. And then for those who want that extra bit of support, I do make my calendar available on a first come first serve basis um, every week. So there is the opportunity for a half an hour um, mentoring call every single week as well. We also have an annual retreat. Again, we are lifestyle. Um, this is all about how you live your best life. This year, we are going to um, Bali um, in 2022 um, in order to start to celebrate, connect, reset, and to prepare for 2023. And that, um, that retreat ticket is included in the cost. Um, and it's just pay your own way. But I'll talk with that a bit deeper with anyone who is interested what i love is how quickly people have seen results um susie um she's melbourne based um says how much she's thoroughly enjoyed the accelerator program um developing a clear direction and vision breaking it down into actions been an absolute game changer for her she says she's grown in leaps and bounds the networking discussing key concepts completely changing her life her mindset even from the mentorship and and from the property side of things um being absolutely invaluable and she's actually now working on creating a network to empower um 50 plus something year old woman um in order to actually step into their light into their power uh, the Dalai Lama says the Western woman is, is um, the one to save the world. She's like, okay, well, Western woman, time to step up and let's do this. So there is a real, there's a real personal reason, a real um, a why, I think, to everybody who's doing this. Uh, Mary, Q1, she's already handed in her resignation. Um, she's flying off to the UK. She's like, I don't want to live in Aussie. Um, she's designed her pipeline and we know that by next quarter, she probably never has to work again in her life. She's 26, 28. Um, she's now going up. For, she's, she wants to work. She loves working. She's like, you know what? I just want to work remotely. Um, she's documenting a journey, doing what she loves, helping people step out and, and find the courage to do what they love um, and, and using that to build her Insta following. And then, of course, we've got Lars. Lars is epic. He's 18. He's unconditional on his first deal. Um, his whole strategy is just flipping properties. First deal, he expects to make 250K. Um, once he's finished that, he's already got a pipeline sort of lined up, investment pipeline, targeting 100% um, per year. That means at 18 years old, he's never, ever going to have to work in his life. His big five-year goal is to climb Everest um, and to give... $1 million to charities. And what's cool about all this is it's never actually about the money, right? Yeah, he's, he's, he's doing what he's doing. He's, um, he's making money. But when you start thinking about the offset, the side effect to it all, right? The five, for, for him to give away $1 million, his rules are that he'll give away 20% of what he makes which means for him to give away $1 million, he's got to make $5 million. He keeps 4 million, he gives away 1 million. Like it's a no brainer. It's not about the money, yet he still accumulates the wealth because of it. We're coming up on time. I promised you um, I'd be done by 9.30. And so I put a link in the chat 
Um, for anyone who wants to have a call to learn a little bit about it, um, see how it might work with them um, or what sort of goals we could set, what they could achieve, that link is there. Um, feel free to book into the calendar. Other than that, I hope this has at least been inspiring for you. Um, you know, I, I did I did absolutely destroy my body um, just for you guys, just to be able to present this webinar and, and to share my learnings with you. So I hope it has been valuable. <laughs> Other than that, um, I guess I'll, I'll see you around and I hope to see you on a call to talk about the Freedom Accelerator.